Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Today's episode is dedicated to the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Spring Convention, where councillors, reeves, mayors gathered in the vibrant city of Brandon, Manitoba. Hosted at the Keystone Center, this biannual event serves as a crucial check-in for municipal leaders from every corner of the province. Throughout the three-day conference, attendees had the opportunity to engage in networking sessions, discussions, and workshops aimed at addressing the diverse needs and challenges facing Manitoba's municipalities. Now, among the distinguished guests was the Honourable Ian Bushy, Minister of Municipal and Northern Relations, who shared insights on the Canoe government's collaboration with municipalities and his vision for addressing their concerns. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for that introduction. And uh, I'd also like to begin by acknowledging the, the land acknowledgement uh, this morning. It is important and imperative that we recognize where we are in Manitoba and where we are in, as society here in Manitoba. Uh, mayors, Reeves, councillors, senior administrators, Association of Manitoba Municipalities Board, and other invited guests, I am pleased to stand before you and welcome you to the 2024 AMM Spring Convention. Our government looks forward to continuing its partnership with AMM to deliver results for all of Manitoba. The Department of Municipal and Northern Relations and the Association of Manitoba Municipalities have had a long and productive relationship in working together to address the needs and concerns of Manitoba municipalities across all of Manitoba. We join you at a gathering like this to grow and build strong partnerships that remain the foundation of Manitoba's governance along with Indigenous nations and Northern Affairs communities at a local level. For me personally, I truly appreciated meeting directly with many of you at the fall convention to better understand my government's role in relation to Manitoba municipalities and further clarify how we can support municipalities as a government here in Manitoba. <clears throat> I also know <clears throat> that conversations continue between meetings and like these, and I, always, I, and I always look forward to the opportunities to connect with you as my colleagues do as well in our government roles across all of our departments. And I made mention of that fact that a lot of things happen. We, we do have spring conventions. We do have larger gatherings like this, but a lot of conversations happen in between. I believe that through this dialogue, patience, and a commitment to act as equal partners, they will truly help to amplify in our shared efforts to make a better Manitoba. Our commitment is clearly demonstrated through permanently increasing the Strategic Municipal Investment Fund, Municipal Operating Grant by $47 million as part of Budget 2024. That was only provided by the previous government as an in-year adjustment. We made that permanent. In addition, Budget 2024 will provide $4.4 million inflationary increase, which in total will increase the operating budget to $221 million for all municipalities. In addition to the increase to the municipal operating grant, I am pleased to announce that Budget 2024 also includes a $3.3 million increase to the Strategic Municipal Investment Fund, Strategic Infrastructure Basket for a total of $167.7 million for core municipal infrastructure that supports community and economic development and the protection of Manitoba waterways. Included in the increase for municipalities outside Winnipeg is an additional $4 million to the Manitoba Water Services Board for a total base budget of $24 million for water and sewer projects as a sign of our commitment to work with the municipalities on improving water and wastewater management to keep up with population growth and growing economies. On the issue of public safety, our government realizes its importance. The Department of Justice projected an increase of $20 million for public safety initiatives to support delivery of police services to towns and municipalities. In the coming weeks, you will hear more about youth employment grants through, provided through Green Team program and our budget measures to improve community-based programming and infrastructure. Our recent budget includes measures beyond the direct budget lines for municipalities. The budget includes measures to lower costs for Manitobans while improving important services like health care that strengthen all of our communities and benefit the growth of our economy. A few examples of this are extending the gas tax holiday to reduce the cost at the pumps for all of Manitobans. Hiring 1,000 health care workers across the province, including doctors, nurses, paramedics, and health care aides. This includes restoring the Rural Doctor Recruitment Fund. Investing $116 million to build and maintain social and affordable housing units for families that need it. Cracking down on organized crime and drug traffickers and getting tough on the causes of crime for safer communities. I look forward to connecting with many of you while I'm here beyond this time at the convention as we continue to listen and work together as our budget theme reflects for one future, one people, one Manitoba. 
and I, I, I will say this too, I, I wanted to add this, and I was thinking of this as I walked in here today, as, as we come and we talk directly to municipal leaders, communities, people at the front line of Manitoba. When we talk about municipalities and we talk about budgeting and our budget just passed yesterday, to be able to look at, at line items in the budget and say this is what this directly means for municipalities, you clearly see that when, and when, when we announced our, our 2% increase at the ending of the freeze that we stood on this very stage and talked about uh, in, the, in the fall convention. But now when we talk about the investments in municipalities, it's a true all of government approach. And that's something that we take very near and dear and we, we maintain as a top priority for us, is to not work in the silo of government. Not to say we're here talking about municipal issues and only municipal issues. And only the, the word municipality, if you will, in, in the, the budget that we have forward. But rather, it reflects all of government approach. So the investments in justice, in health, in infrastructure, in affordable housing, it has an impact across all of Manitoba. It'll have an impact across all municipalities. So I look forward to being able to, to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. As we stood here during a campaign time in Brandon, and we stood here during the AMM uh, convention in the fall, we talked about our priorities. And our priorities were derived from people in this room as well. Healthcare, of course, is, is a top of mind, top of product, and a very important product. But so is the investment in infrastructure of municipalities and our communities as well. So we take that of great importance, we take that of great pride to be able to have those in collaboration with folks in this very room, folks in your communities, to get out there and have those conversations about what the priority is. Priorities may shift from day to day, but for the most part, they stay high priorities when we talk about infrastructure, we talk about safety, we talk about health. So when we have those priorities as a common goal, we work toward that common goal together. And I look forward to being able to have the discussions while I stand up here in front of the room of, of everybody here today, Many, many conversations will happen aside from this. Many conversations will happen in your communities. We had a, we had a meeting with, uh, with the community just two weeks ago. And I think he said it best. He said a lot of the conversations that we had did not happen in the boardroom. They happened on leaning on the side of the truck out in the community. And that's a true reflection of where we are in Manitoba. For myself, I also live a couple hours north of Winnipeg. And I've had many conversations leaning on the side of the truck about what it is to be in Manitoba, what the priorities of Manitobans are. And sometimes those are the best ways to be able to have those conversations and bring those ideas forward and bring those ideas to nurture into something that develops solutions. So we are in a, in a room of solutions. So let's do this together. We're in this together. Let's do it all for one Manitoba. Now, after his speech in an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview, we had the privilege of sitting down with Minister Bushy to delve deeper into the government's initiatives and his role in facilitating dialogue with municipal leaders from every corner of the province. Um, Minister Bushy, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by saying, uh, what have you heard so far? I know it's still early days for the spring AMM convention, but are you hearing any reaction from the provincial budget that was tabled earlier this month? Uh, well, actually, our budget passed yesterday as well, so we're very excited about that. And uh, I think the, the conversation is, is more than just the last couple of days in terms of what we table as the budget, or the last couple of weeks, for that matter, um, and the passing of the budget. Uh, what we heard from municipalities is the investment that they wanted to see continuing that uh, seven plus years of, uh, of frozen funding. So to, to kind of bring them to, to a, a level standard, if you will, uh, was significant to be able to do that. So in our budget, we committed, well, previously, we also committed to, to ending the freeze. So again, we committed budget to, to a, a, a 2% increase and also to making some of the, um, the one-off funding that they had previously permanent. Uh, so it's a, it's a small thing. And I will say that's, uh, that that is something that we, we hear commonplace is it, it's a start. And it's something that we take a, a great priority in being able to to bring that forward and it was a common message that we heard uh, throughout our time in opposition as well as to how much the freeze uh, to municipal funding was, was hurting, uh, especially with the rising cost, the inflationary costs uh, across, well, not just Manitoba municipality but across the country. So we wanted to be, we wanted to be able to, uh, to do our part and I think as a responsible government being able to invest in people is something significant. Obviously we also inherited a pretty significant deficit. Uh, but our, our cabinet, our government, and our premier is very adamant about the fact that if we did nothing but pay down the deficit, uh, we would always just maintain that. Uh, so investments in communities, investment in municipalities is something that's a priority for us. 
um, because at the end of the day, um, those those kind of challenges that are, are faced by municipalities is, is kind of amplified across all the province. And um, to, to kind of uh, steal a, a message from uh, some President Blight, you know, when Manitoba municipalities do well, Manitoba does well and vice versa. So that was important for us to be able to do. One of the things that you said during your speech to the convention, opening day of convention, was you want to you want to work as equal partners with municipalities. Now, when I've sat down with municipal leaders from across this province, I hear that is their big concern, is they want to be treated like equal and not being dictated to. Why is that so important to yourself and also Premier Canoe to work with municipalities instead of addressing municipalities? Yeah, and again, that's that's a common thing that I had heard as well. Yeah. And I mean, we've taken, um, in our short time here, in our six plus months, or going on six months of, of, of governments as well, um, we've had multiple conversations. And for, for a lot of folks that we met with, it's been the first time. It's been the first time they've either talked with ministers or the premier uh, because that door was not only closed, but it was locked in a lot of cases. So for us, it was imperative to have those conversations when we talk about frontline in Manitoba, it's synonymous with healthcare throughout the pandemic and rightfully so, but at the same time, municipalities are, are the front lines to, to Manitoba and front lines to who we are as Manitobans. So if you want to be able to truly engage, then you need to engage those frontline folks as well. And I think it's important for us to, to collaborate in in conjunction with and not to just kind of dictate and have the paternalistic approach say this is this is what you have deal with it um, I, I believe and I firmly believe that that's the wrong the wrong method the wrong method the wrong messaging to have uh, because at the end of the day we have a there's a lot of a lot of common uh, issues in in municipalities but there's also municipality specific issues uh, and, and you get to the heart of those by having those conversations and, and we're excited to have those conversations across all levels of a government and all departments as well we're committing to not work in a silo of government while I'm, I sit here as a municipal relations minister at the end of the day if, if there's an issue on health then we'll, we'll have the chat with the health minister as well justice uh, families, housing, uh, all of all aspects of government. We really take an all-of-government approach, and we don't believe in working in silos of government. One of the, when I sat down with President Blight after the budget was tabled, he said it was a good first step on the infrastructure funding. And I know municipalities want to fix all the issues right away, but municipalities only have a certain amount of money that they can use every year. They can't run deficits like the provincial government. Or can we expect more? Can municipalities expect more from this government in the next budget? Or are we sort of looking at that just 2% increase? Increase from year to year to offset some of those infrastructure issues that municipalities are dealing with right now, whether it be road, sewage. Yeah. And at, at the end of the day, when we, we, we committed on lifting the freeze and being able to use the, the 2% as a, as a base, if you will, right? So we'll, we'll have the conversation, again, in conjunction with the municipalities about what an escalator may look like yeah. and what funding models uh, kind of work or don't work. And I mean, whether or not we, we, we tweak the funding model. But again, those are conversations that we, we want to openly have with the municipalities and, and communities that are affected by that. Uh, when you, you talk about the infrastructure challenges that have really faced municipalities over the course of the last seven years, uh, so having funding frozen is a significant challenge, but at the same time, there's been escalating costs on um, when we talk about water and wastewater project, infrastructure project in particular. I mean, when you when you have a, a, a project for, for $1,000 and it, it's 70%, you know, escalated costs, maybe that's something somebody can handle. But when you have $10 million projects that are 70% over, then it gets to be a, a more significant challenge. So we want to be able to have that conversation on, on an ongoing basis and not to say, you know, this is this is our four-year commitment because obviously we live in the election cycle of four <laughs> years, but at the same time, I mean, I think we need to be able to assess th as things go. So our, our commitment to ending the freeze, uh, again, uh, uh, President Blight had talked about it being a, a step in the right direction, and I believe we need to continue to make those steps in the right direction on an ongoing basis. Most of the municipal leaders that I've been chatting to have basically sung your praise, <laughs> and I say you as uh, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, Municipal Relations, because of that freeze that lift. Um, what do you see your relationship like going forward now? Because now that you've passed your first budget under this new provincial government, is it just working with them, having that collaborative approach, or is there something that you want to make sure that the municipalities feel as minister uh, dealing with municipalities? Well, I, I want them to feel that they have a partner, right? They have a partner and they have a, an advocate on, yeah. on behalf of municipalities as well, because there, there's other conversations to be had on the federal level, for example. I mean, we're, we're very keen on the fact that we want to maintain partnerships across all levels of government and not be seen as a government that's going to pick fights yeah. and, and point blame, point fingers and say, this is, if, if we only had this, then we could do this. We don't want to 
do that that kind of governance and that's not the messaging that we want to be able to give we want to be able to work in collaboration with it to know municipalities uh, to have them know that that they have a true partner and a true uh government that wants to work in collaboration with right and, and not say we're going to agree on everything but at the same time we're always going to have those conversations and for us that's important to have that open line of communication so when we we have issues that that arise of the day you know whether we get into you know flood season for example or we get forest fire season uh things are not a surprise right we we know because we've had the conversations we had the communication and we know the challenge is going in and there's if things come as a surprise obviously things may happen that still may surprise folks across all spectrums but at the same time, if we're having that regular communication on a regular basis, then it's important that we we know the needs and we we assess the needs. And again, not to say that you know there, there's not an endless pot of money to deal with all the issues, but at the same time, we need to be able to proactively be always progressing forward. And if if we're at a standstill, then we might as well be going backwards, and we're not we're not wanting to do that in any means. I'm going to play a little devil's advocate as my last question with you, because when I spoke to President Blight, he did talk about rural crime being one of the big issues that he didn't see that this government went far enough in this budget. Can you sort of give me some insight on what this government is doing to address rural crime and work with municipalities to address rural crime? Because when I sat down with the mayor of Stonewall, this was the concern that she had brought up to me. When I chatted with the RM, they talked about crime as well. And and I don't want to say small crime, but because crime is crime at the end of the day. But what can this government do to alleviate some of those concerns that this government isn't going far enough on rural crime? Yeah, and again, it gets into not working the silo of government. When we sit in this in the room with an AMM, for example, and we we we, we chat about municipalities, and maybe just the word municipality just kind of it, it tries to key in on on just you know the, my department, for example, the Minister of Municipal Relations. But it comes to so much more, and justice being one example as well. So when we talk about our investments in, in healthcare and our investments in particular in this file and in justice, it also helps to kind of alleviate the different aspects and hopefully take some of the some of the, the the burden and the challenges out there. But we are significantly invested in, in the tough on crime as well as the the root causes of crime. Um, so obviously we we deal with that in, in the city centers like City of Winnipeg, Brandon, Selkirk, you know Thompson, those those more bigger cities, if you will. But at the same time, that investment in rural um, justice and rural kind of criminal activity is something that we take great prominence in and we have invested and we are and will continue to invest significantly in that uh, again it gets to be for us the root cause of that but at the same time if municipalities know they have that advocacy but they also need to know that that investment is there as well too because when I, again I get, I get back into my comment about frontline so the, the people that live in the municipalities, live in the communities, live out in rural Manitoba, see it, they feel it each and every day. So they also need to be able to see and, and feel the impacts of that investment that the government wants to be able to, to make into those communities to stay tough on crime. Sometimes that's, that's a phrase that's kind of tossed about there kind of previously, but at the same time, for us to be able to stay tough on crime, it's about backing that up with investments as well but investments in the communities that are strategic investments in conjunction with the community so they can see those impacts firsthand. Minister Bushy, thank you so much for taking 10 minutes out of your day to chat down. Always a pleasure. Additionally, delegates heard from AMM President Cam Blight regarding the work that AMM is doing to help municipalities from across Manitoba. Well, good morning, everyone. (laughs) We have an engaging crowd here this morning. Good morning. (laughs) I just have to start off by uh, just giving another acknowledgement. Um, I'm very blessed to work with an incredible council and, uh, you know, administration team back in my municipality. And I, I you know, firmly believe you surround yourself yourself with great people and great things can happen. And that's exactly what we have here on this AMM, with this AMM team. We have an amazing board of directors, excellent uh, group of vice presidents and executive and an incredible staff from the administration to the policy and communication. So I, you know, I'm truly am blessed to work alongside all these great individuals and they work very, very hard on your behalf. So could you all please just join me in giving them one more round of applause. Okay, so as um, many of you probably know, my name is Cam Blight and I'm the president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. And I'm also the Reeve of the Arm of Portage of Prairie. I want to thank you all for taking the time to attend our jam-packed event here in Brandon. I am pleased to see well over 600 delegates in attendance. I would like to recognize the Honorable Ian Bushy, Minister of Municipal and Northern Relations. 
Thank you for joining us here today. Shortly, we will hear from Minister Bushy, Jeff Fawcett, Mayor for the great city of Brandon, as well as Dwayne Nickel, President of the Manitoba Municipal Administrators. Before I hand it over to the other speakers, I highly recommend that you all take the opportunity to explore our trade show, which is located in the City Square, Exhibition Hall and Manitoba Room from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. today and tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Responding to feedback from our members, we've extended this year's trade show to run a day and a half. We're excited to offer you more time to engage with our exhibitors and discover new opportunities. Next, AMM staff have worked hard to ensure that all delegates will find a topic of interest during this year's breakout sessions. This year's sessions cover several important topics scheduled for both today and tomorrow. So please take a moment to refer to the agenda and select the breakout sessions that best aligns with your interests and needs. Additionally, we have included four plenary sessions into this year's program the first of which begins shortly. We have carefully picked pertinent presentations that are relevant to all municipalities. All of our sessions aim to address key challenges and opportunities that resonate with the diverse needs of all communities, ensuring valuable insights for every delegate. Next, as the AMA makes it a priority to meet one-on-one -on -one with municipal councils, Healthcare remains a top priority across municipal Manitoba. The emphasis on healthcare mirrors one of our four key pillars of, successful, of our successful Let's Grow Manitoba Together campaign. With the recent unveiling of the provincial budget, it is evident that healthcare remains a top priority for the future. Challenges in healthcare, particularly concerning the recruitment and retention of healthcare professionals, are consistently highlighted. Therefore, our plenary session this afternoon couldn't be timelier. Later today, we will have the opportunity to hear from Shared Health about their insights into the retention, training, and recruitment strategies for the provincial health workforce. Next, the municipal mixer which usually involves alcohol, will take place in the City Square, Exhibition Hall, and Manitoba Room from 4 to 5 p.m. I encourage you all to join us at this event and connect with fellow municipal representatives from across our province. Additionally, it offers extra time to explore the trade show. For those that have registered this evening, it features a Women in Municipal in Government reception from 5 to 6 p.m. Tomorrow starts with a lineup of presentations and breakout sessions. In response to feedback from our members in the convention survey, we've ensured a full agenda for the final day of the event. So I encourage you to stay until the end. Take advantage of the opportunity to hear some exceptional presentations. Over the coming days, I look forward to meeting with all of you and discussing your municipal priorities. Thank you very much for your attention. I will now pass it back over to Dennis Volkoff. Now we caught up with President Blight on the convention's final day to gain perspectives on the path forward for municipalities. We explored the common issues voiced by municipal leaders across the province, as well as the unique challenges faced by each and every single one of them. Our discussion also touched upon the eagerly anticipated federal budget release scheduled for later this week. Cam, thank you so much for doing this. Um, 600 delegates from across Manitoba descended upon Brandon, Manitoba for three days. How do you think the convention went? I think it went extremely well. Uh, it was a great representation from all across our great province. Uh, we had some phenomenal weather outside, and yet people still um, you know, came here and spent a couple days indoors with us. And uh, I've heard nothing but positive feedback so far. And I, I'm just I'm very, very pleased with how things went this week. You had a lot of breakaway sessions where delegates were able to learn uh, some sort of hands-on experience from industry leaders. Uh, you had mi uh, the Minister of Municipal Relations here, uh, Relations, Ian Bushy, give a speech as well. Uh, what are you hearing from municipal leaders to now go towards your fall convention in Winnipeg? Well, I, I think what we're hearing is largely we're on the right track. Uh, they, they feel that our key priorities certainly align with theirs. And I, 
You know, I, I think that's, that's really critical for us. So we, we tour around and we visit with municipalities every single year and we try and get our finger on the pulse of exactly what matters most to them. And, uh, you know, then we try to build that into our, you know, our conventions and, and also our key messaging. And, and I think from what I heard is, is very reassuring that I think we're on the right track and we're going to continue to push some of the major issues, which obviously is a built-in multi, multi-year uh, funding model for municipalities. Um, you know, increased uh, supports for public safety and uh, you know health care that's, that's just another one that keeps coming up it, it's great that we have you know a, a money put at it and, and uh, being put towards uh, or a plan to you know recruit extra x number of individuals but exactly how are we going to get there and what role can municipalities play in all this so um, you know we have some uh, some work ahead of us and uh, we're really excited for the coming months so I had the pleasure of sitting down with uh, numerous uh, members of the AMM and talked about their issues that they're facing and there's a range of issues that municipalities are facing I just spoke to someone from Lynn Lake who said cell phone coverage is a big issue for them then I spoke to someone in uh, the RM of Harrison Park, who said invasive species. Absolutely. How do you deal with so many diverse issues and sort of come to a conclusion of how you advocate towards the provincial government? Because every municipality has their own unique challenges, but you as the organization of AMM now have to take it and sort of get a path towards what you're going to do with the provincial government. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where, you know, the resolution session comes into play at our fall convention. Uh, that that you know, truly provides us with the direction that we're going to go forward on. And that's something, you know, that all municipalities vote on, um, you know, and either agree or disagree, on, you know, on issues for us to move forward on. Uh, you know, when, it, when it's unique issues for municipalities, what we, we, we try and be that conduit where we can, you know, cr- uh, connect them with the right people or, you know, um, just direct them in the right sort of way to, you know, hopefully find some resolution to their situation. But also we want to be kept in, loop, in the loop in the conversation and, uh, the, you know, the dialogue that's going on back and forth so we can kind of monitor it and build off of that and maybe put it together with some other municipalities who are having similar issues and then we can bring our voice forward on that. So one of the other big uh, takeaways from this weekend from my perspective is AMM, AMM's board is now fully staffed. You, Nancy Penner is back as the central district, one of the two central district uh, reps. What does it mean to have that full board back in operation? Well, I, I think it's excellent. We have a full complement going forward. I firmly believe in the work that our board does. Uh, we have very strong members that have, uh, you know, diverse backgrounds and, and levels of experience and interests. Um, Nancy's been on our b- board before, and, and she was a strong board member. So uh, we're very happy to have Nancy back. And, you know, we, we had three excellent candidates that came forward, and I was really impressed. Um, it is great to see interest being shown and be a part of the AMM board. And so I, I think all the candidates that let, let, that let their name stand. Um, but, you know, I'm very excited to be moving forward with our full full board and uh, you know we're, we're ready to get back to work. So what does the board do next now? Now that you've taken, you've had a few days with all member communities, you're going to be, I'm assuming, meeting as a board over the next few weeks and then you have your district meetings as well. But what do you as president and the board have to do to sort of prepare yourself to get towards that fall resolution dates? Well, next up is we're going to have a debrief on the uh, on this convention, um, and I will be doing that with the executive and executive director Dennis Volkoff. And we're you know we've already been having discussions. I saw it with forward. <laughs> yeah, you know it, it's constantly ongoing, and we're we're constantly connecting. Uh, it doesn't matter the day of the week or the time of the day. We're we're always talking and spitballing ideas because we just want to see find ways to make things better. Uh, but next up for us is the board meeting and our lobby days uh, with all the provincial parties uh, that'll be happening later on this month, and we're going to once again go forward and, and bring forward our key priorities and our concerns for all Manitoba municipalities and then we'll do go forward to our June district meetings as you mentioned which just kind of starts to form the resolution process and uh, uh, but you know I think we have a pretty good idea of what direction we're going to be going what the the needs are of our municipalities but it just reaffirms uh, you know the, the key issues that are facing uh, the Manitoba municipalities. So I want to flip the script a little bit a bit and talk about the federal government because next week literally a week from today almost uh, the federal government will be tabling its uh, federal budget uh, as a member of FCM, but also as the president of AMM, but also as the Reeve. What are you looking for uh, in this upcoming federal budget? And I see a sigh of uh, stress, but I've got to ask, are you looking for anything exciting or are you looking just to hopefully have steady as she goes? I'm just hoping for something. I'm going to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, when I was out with, with FCM in Ottawa uh, during lobby days back in December, um, you know, I was quite concerned for the messaging that I was getting from the Liberal government as far as what's going to be, uh, what funds are going to be available for municipalities. And it was, uh, it was quite disappointing from what I heard. 
And uh, so from there, you know, I know FCM has worked hard and a lot of municipalities across this province have been bringing their, their concerns forward and we've been advocating for a new funding model for, for municipalities uh, you know, and, uh, you know, of course the gas tax uh, fund, uh, but I'm just not hearing a lot of positive comments. I hear a lot of negative comments and a lot of comments that suggest municipalities are actually the problem. And so that, you know, that, that, that tone and that, 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 that direction of conversation is really, really concerning uh, for me, and I'm wondering if it isn't setting the stage for this upcoming budget. Uh, but I hope I'm wrong, and so that you know, that's why I'm saying I'm just hoping for something. I'm hoping that there's going to be some positive uh, infrastructure funding available for for municipalities. There, there, there's all this talk about the need of increased housing. We have to have more housing. Well, that's all fine and dandy. That fall, largely that falls on the municipalities because we have to provide the infrastructure to support this housing. Mm -hmm. But we cannot afford to bring the infrastructure up to where it needs to be. To, to support this type of growth that's being planned. And, you know, largely this is, you know, issues that's been created by the upper levels of government, and so they need to step up um, and help support municipalities so that we can get these houses built um, or work with the developers to get these houses built. Uh, but we need that, those dollars because $107,000 of infrastructure is required for every single, you know, door that's being put up. So we need help. What happens if you don't get it? Oh, we continue to lobby. We we continue. I know, to but in the short term, that 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 those issues don't just go away tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If the help doesn't come from the federal government or the provincial government, at that, if it doesn't come this budget, you're going to be waiting another 24, <laughs> 12 months until the next budget. Can municipalities survive another year of lack of funding on these key infrastructure issues? Well, it's, it's we're just going to fall further and further behind, and then these projects are going to cost that much more, and we're missing opportunities after opportunity for residential growth and economic growth across this country which benefits the both levels of government uh, they're the big winners with a lot of the residential and economic growth that takes place and once again we're just going to be missing these opportunities and it's going to sail on by and when it's time you know to go ahead and, and start to do some of these projects again the the costs are going to quadruple um, so we're, we're going to do continue to do what we do best and let's do you know do more with less uh, unfortunately, but it's going to come, uh, you know, at, at the cost of certain projects and uh, growth. Um, but we're going to do what we can to provide the necessary services for our residents that they, you know, continue to count on us for. Um, but it, it just means there's going to be some real hard decisions made around these council tables. I want to turn back to provincial because I just spoke with uh, Minister Bushy after his speech to the convention, and I asked him about rural crime because you and I had talked about it right after the provincial budget, and this my last line of questioning but he said that he's listening to municipalities he's hearing the concerns that you have put forward but also other municipalities around rural crime um it's been a week since we last chatted have you had any conversations with the attorney general with minister bushy about rural crime and addressing that in an ongoing fashion rather than just the budget Yes, I have. Uh, the uh, the Minister of Justice uh, reached out uh, to me right, right away, and we had a very good conversation. And I, you know, I, I much appreciate the conversation that we had, um, and I think it was very productive. And you know, it sets the stage for next steps. Um, I have not, you know, spoken too much about Minister Bushy about uh, real crime just since the budget's been released, but we certainly will be. Um, it is a major issue across this province, and it's at the forefront of everyone's minds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, I, I apologize, but I refuse to accept this as the new normal. And I, I refuse to accept that this is the way that it's got to be, and we have to accept this type of crime, and we have to find a way to manage it. Absolutely not. And I will continue to battle on behalf of municipalities to find ways so that we can minimize the crime and make our community safe again. And so that just starts with the next conversation that I can have with, uh, you know, uh, both ministers. So... Uh, we expect that to happen very soon. Crime seemed to be a topic that I talked about a lot to your member municipalities over the last few days. Um, it seems like it's not just large urban centers, but it is happening in even rural communities. And I say rural communities, and I know we're talking about rural crime, but is there a positive step? Because I heard members of your organization on the stage over the last Tuesday say, if you have an issue, come to me with a solution. What's the solution that municipalities want? Is it uh, sort of more reform around bail? Is it actual more crime, uh, more uh, cops on the streets? What is the thing that you would want the government to do tomorrow? Yes. 
<laughs> it is all of that. He, but, but absolutely, it is bail reform. Okay, we, we need to, these repeat offenders. And it doesn't necessarily just need to be violent offenders. Mm-hmm. It's the repeat offenders themselves. Uh, they need to be held accountable. And there needs to be consequences for their actions. Provide the necessary re- rehabilitation uh, that, that, for them uh, to help them get better. For those that do want to, you know, uh, find a pathway forward that is, uh, you know, that it's not in a criminal sense. But also that, you know, provide some necessary funding to municipalities so that they can go forward and put these community safety and well-being plans together. Help them fund community safety officers if need be, because right now public safety is being pushed on to municipalities with these community safety officers, which are solely funded by the municipalities. Uh, that's just another burden that we're taking on. And we're, we're seeing you know, public safety is, is well over 30% of some municipal budgets. Um, so we, we need increased uh, police presence. We need increased boots on the ground. Um, and, you know, it just, we're just asking for more resources. Uh, just, just once again, I give the RCMP and, and the municipal police forces some more tools in their toolbox so they can continue to combat crime. Perfect. Thanks so much. As always. Thank you, sir. But the conversations didn't stop there. Throughout the convention, I was able to connect with municipal leaders from across the province for insights and perspectives that will be featured on our sister show, Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. So tune in starting Monday, April 29th, as we bring you exclusive interviews highlighting the voices and experiences of Manitoba's municipal leaders. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance and the decisions they make in the political trenches, local government at work. Now we are your go-to platform for municipal coverage committed to keeping you informed as well as engaged. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.